it's a pleasure to be here for this, and thanks for the, for the invitation. Um, and just as I see, I, I changed slightly the, the title, um, but the content is more or less the same. So let's probably, um, in a workshop, not really the right place for, uh, for, for motivation, but, you know, essentially, um, what, what we do with, with massive gravity, in general, the standard field of gravity, most of the time we add degrees of freedom in a different way, okay? So what I would be interested in is just adding non-derivative terms for, uh, for the genome itself. And um, I will stick to the local modification, as, as, we, as, we see, uh, as we've seen uh, yesterday, the, it's also interesting that uh, modifications are not local. Um, but I think it's important to, uh, to stress what is the the, the, the goal, I mean, what is the um, uh, kind of goal, the theory we, we want to uh, well, well, I think it must be predictive because we must remember that we have to compete with, with, with Giacomo. You know, it's only a tough, tough opponent. So, um, so it means that it has to be uh, consistent, at least at a sub meter scale, where this is in the, the trial where Giacomo has been tested. And with no dis discrepancy. Also, we need to be consistent with the post Newtonian prediction of the solar system. Okay? And also, the, then there is the cosmological side, CMB, but also the stuff, but at least staying in the linear regime, CMB is clearly one of the benchmarks. Um, and then, of course, because we have, we have in mind the uh, dark edge, of course, this theory has to provide an explanation for the present acceleration. Of, uh, of the, 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 the universe. Okay? There is another issue in a sense that, uh, I mean, we know that most of the time these theories are effectively theory, as, as GR is, and uh, we, we need to have a top that is as large as, as, as possible. And again, GR is, is, is very difficult to, uh, um, to compete because GR is, is the, the largest cutoff you can imagine because it's basically a plan, plan, plan scale, okay? And um, uh, now, in a sense, we, we, we try to play the same uh, game that has been uh, uh, played in, uh, in gauge theory. So we know that when we have a gauge theory, we can uh, have a, a massive phase, if you like it, the X-rays, in where the uh, such potentials is, uh, goes from 1 over R to, to U okay? And we know that even without the if mechanism, this can be done. Okay? And keeping the theory reasonable, uh, regular in the sense that uh, the, the cutoff is uh, still uh, um, acceptable. Okay? So if you, uh, in the gauge theory, the cutoff is, is essentially uh, the inverse of the cut and cost and time to the mass of the gauge boson. Okay? If, you, if you essentially do the same in a GR, you get the, the, the best you can do without uh, and its mechanism is essentially what's called lambda two. This is the type of scale. If you say that the mass of the of the gravity has to be basically the horizon scale, uh, then you get with, with this number. So in a sense, essentially, uh, without the X mechanism, the best you can hope is to have a cutoff that is this side. And you see that even from from even before starting building up theories, it's clearly, I mean, we are very far from from, from plan scale. So clearly, even from from this point of view. The if mechanism, mechanism for, for, for gravity is, uh, is essential. It needs to be, uh, you say, uh, close to GR. Okay? Um, let me briefly re review, probably it's not needed here, but just uh, to be as simple as possible, the, uh, the linearized theory. I mean, we know that in GR there are two degrees of freedom, and that, that's the story. Is well known, so you, you perturb, for instance, around flat space time, you get 10, 10, 10 uh, metric components, then you have uh, uh, four gauge invariances, and then, as usual, uh, to count the degrees of freedom, you have to double the number of gauge uh, invariance, and you end up with two degrees of freedom. Okay? Um, now, what happens when I, when I have a master? Okay? Let me start with a gauge invariant case. This is the more general a gauge invariant. Uh, so the Lorentz invariant term that you can have in GR. Uh, of course, because of this mass term, uh, gauge, gauge uh, invariance is, is, is broken, but there is uh, still some, uh, um, some, some 
some accidental symmetry in the sense that um, the, the uh, by consistency <coughs> in the Einstein, Einstein equation, the, the divergence of this piece must be zero. And so I still, and in so counting the number of, of degrees of freedom, I, I, I get uh, 10 minus 4, that is 6. So generally, generally speaking, uh, uh, I get uh, 5 plus 1. I mean, I, I'm writing 5 plus 1 because 5 is the, the number of degrees of freedom for a massive spin to particle. So clearly here there is something else, and in this case it is a, is a, is a scalar, and, and as, as, as we know, this scalar typically is, 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 a, this scalar is a ghost. Okay? You can see immediately if you just uh, write down the metric perturbation this way. So when up a plus b is different from zero, this is the gain term for the two fields that are propagating, and clearly the gain term has a, has a negative a gain value. Okay? Um, so it's a ghost. I mean, this is this is well known. <coughs> so what what to do? Okay, there, there is a in the realized level. There is a first option. It's called the Pauli field tuning. So you simply set a plus b equal to zero. And in this case, the the ghost is not anymore. There. Okay. Um, but there is a price to, to to be paid. Now, when you do that, the 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 m to zero limit is not smooth in the sense that, for instance, the when you uh, compute the light bending from, from, from the sun, you get that actually you are 25% off from the exponential value and also from the GR prediction because the extra degrees of freedom actually giving uh, a new contribution that is not cancelled when, when, when you go to M equal equals. This is very clear, the structural mechanism has been shown to every time by as well. So there is an extra degree of freedom that is not really decoupling when M goes to zero. Okay? So to uh, claim to, to save uh, your, your, your theory, you have to, to rely on some non-perturbative physics because clearly at the realized level, uh, your, your theory is moved out. And that was the basic idea of Einstein saying that, okay, we simply cannot use linear perturbation theory around the, the sun in, the, in general in, in, the, in, in, the, in the solar system. But for, 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 uh, for massive gravity, when you go beyond the linear level, unfortunately, the idea is very nice, but it doesn't really work well. Okay? It has been shown uh, by some, some of the, the, the authors are, 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 are So the mechanism is, is the mechanism is generally interesting, uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't really work very well for massive gravity. So there is another option that I, I will follow here. It's just, um, Essentially, it was put forward by, by Rubakov and, and Boskin, it was very simple. Um, why we don't simply write down mass terms that are not low energy? Value? After all, the main motivation is, is, is cosmology. So it's a low energy effect in theory. You don't really need okay, uh, low energy values. FLW is not clearly okay. It's not really uh, low energy okay? So I simply uh, saying that. O only the, the, the only residual symmetry that, that I want is simply rotational environment. So instead of having two more possible mass terms, there, there, there are actually more. There are one, two, three, uh, four, five. Okay? So you have mass terms for, for the HG00 scalar. Scalars and terms are classified with the SO3, uh, with the SO3 group. So you have uh, mass for the HG0 scalar, mass for, the, uh, for, for this vector, and the mass for the tensors. There is another mass for the spatial trace of, 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 of H, and there is the, a mass for the standard mixes of the, uh, the, the spatial trace with the H0. And, okay, what is important is that um, when, uh, okay, when uh, M equals zero, okay, this ma mass term is zero, and M, M1 is, is not zero, you have five degrees of freedom, and there is no cost in, in your theory. <laughs> There is, another, uh, there is another option to have uh, no cost. You, you simply uh, leave M0 generic, but you set M1 equal to 0. This is a very special case. Uh, I won't really discuss much this case, but this, uh, you have only two degrees of freedom. Essentially, they all, you have basically all the vectors and, and scalars are not dynamic, and uh, basically the only, the only dynamical part is the, is the spin to part that, that gets uh, massive. The, the real benefit in this theory is that actually this time when you give up your experience, the uh, mass, the zero mass limit becomes smooth. Okay? There are just mild conditions on, on, on the ratio 
of the virus in us. Okay? So you don't really need to, uh, to use a uh, uh, Weinstein mechanism or rely on non perturbative physics at, at the solar system scale. Everything <coughs> is really more or less like uh, GR, plus small correction that goes to zero with a with, uh, with, with, uh, energy. Sorry, can you yeah. ask something? Sure. I mean, you're saying that in cosmology you don't need Lorentz symmetry, right? But yeah. uh, first of all, I mean, already in cosmology you somehow have to align the preferred frame with the cosmic <laughs> frame. So that will introduce a sort of natural issue if you just assume well, that they are that this, okay, this, is a, this is a very interesting point. It's, it's always the case in any model of massive gravity, except for when you, okay, we will see that we need a, a reference metric. Unless this reference metric is, is dynamic, you need this, this, uh, this, this preference choice of frame. I mean, it's there, it's in the, in the, in the theory. I mean, there's nothing you, that you can do about it. This is typically of massive gravity, whatever is low, it's invariant, low, it's breaking. This is, there is a preference frame, and it's up to you to choose which frame you need. This is a really, it's not really clearly stated in the literature, so sometimes you, you move the, your preference frame from, let's say, solar system to, uh, let's say, CMB, but it's there, okay? And there, there will be effect. Most probably they are suppressed I mean, by, by M, but there, there are preference frame effects. So this is. Okay, and my second comment is that yeah. uh, then you sort of deviate and start talking about solar system tests, and then you do test Lorentz symmetry. So, uh, I mean, in solar system tests, you have True. preferred frame parameters, so True. there are strings and constraints. Sure, but the, uh, when, you, when, you, when you compute these effects, they are, they, are, they are really small. They go to zero with that. So they can be consistent with the, with the actual observation. I, you, you prefer okay. graph. I mean, there are also preferred frame tests. Again, the, the thing with the parameters. So it's, uh, it, they are there, and, and clearly. I mean, uh, from an aesthetic point of view, Having a preference frame is clear, at least to me, it's not really something really pleasant, but at least as far as I know. No, I don't worry about the no, aesthetics, well, only about the numbers. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying that there are preference frames, <laughs> and uh, I mean, if you want, as, as, as far as I know, the only way uh, to construct this modified criteria is to have a preferred frame. Unless you go into the bi gravity uh, business, but this is, 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 is the other problem. Okay? But it's, it's, yeah. it's not that there's one. Yeah, but you have to, I mean, because you have a non dynamic matrix, you have to decide in which frame your, let's say, flat matrix is as the flat form. I mean, you have to decide what is the frame in which your, your stock are are Right, it's, it's that's, that's still a spontaneous frame. Right? Well, spontaneous when you have the dynamics. That, it's just, you just, you just have an effective one. It's like, it's like I mean, uh, saying that I give a mass to, to my zeta boson and I hope that there will be an exponential breaking. But uh, unless you, you build really your, your X sector that's consistent, then it's just, you know, we hope that, that, that there is that. Unfortunately, I mean, we don't know. No, but it's the same sense that in GR, yeah. uh, in the end, you have to choose one solution and you just one. Once you've got a cosmological solution, there is a frame. No, 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 because in general, you don't have absolute objects. Everything is, is, is dynamic. I mean, eta, eta is not determined by, by, by anyone. It's given once forever. I, I think and the point is if you have two frames, yeah. right? In the sense that matter can pick a frame for you. Yeah. I, mean, I think this is what you're saying about GR, right? I'm mean, the perfect fluid. There is a frame of the fluid, right? But yeah, you if there's exactly. another frame yeah, yeah, that is intrinsic to the body of your theory, yeah, but then they don't have to allow. It's not one frame, it's still a class of frames, because you still have a random frame. Yeah, okay, that's, but, uh, it's class of, but still, I mean... That's, that's the sense in which it's better. Well, it's, even here there is a class of frame, just a, you know, rotation. It's a rotational class. So yes. it's more or less the same, but it's true, I mean, you have to decide whether the, the, the preferred matter frame is aligned with the CMB, with the, this ether, call it, I mean, I yeah, you can. In some, the, my point is that I'm, you can't always decide depending on the theory. You, sometimes, you know, evolution drives you away. You can decide to tune it, and then it just. No, no. Uh, I think it's an important point. Well, most of the time, these perfect frame effects are suppressed by M, but <coughs> are there. And unfortunately, in the Lorentz invariant case, they are very difficult to compute because you know you have no, this nonlinear effect in the solar system. Here, are easy to compute. That's the only thing I can say. Okay. Um, so to avoid the uh, uh, in, in this, uh, as, as I was saying, because there is no discontinuity, it's, it's easy to uh, to pass the equivalence principle test and all sorts of things. 
and, uh, and, and all costs in the time for action can be computed in a controller way. And this is, I think, is, 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 is important because it's one of the uh, key uh, points of, of JAR. So JAR became uh, a popular theory when passed those tests. Um, so what happens beyond the linear level? Okay, beyond the linear level, one has to construct a theory that is, looks like that. You have the, your standard einstein hilbert theory plus some some object that's called a potential that is functional is a function of the metric components. And when you expand around your preferred background, let's let's let's, let's say to be close to whatever you like, you need to, uh, to reproduce your linearizer, your quadratic uh, expansion. So you get a uh, spin to arc, spin to Lagrangian plus mass mass time. This is the Lorentz breaking case. In the Lorentz invariance case, you simply you have an uh, additional relation between this mass term and <coughs> construct the Lorentz invariant form. Uh, now, now comes the question of uh, of uh, the need of of, of, of uh, another method. Clearly, just by the metric itself, you cannot really construct any non-trivial function. So you need something else. Can be what I don't know. Uh, can be a uh, Vectors can be uh, scalars, can be uh, okay. But let's say generically, uh, I have a method that can be uh, composed by, you know, by, by, by by scalars in the Stuckelberg, by uh, other other stuff. But clearly, you need some something, okay? And you have two options, okay? Option one is, is the new metric that is a, is a, is the non dynamical okay? And there is option two is a, is a dynamical one, and then you end up more or less in the by gravity. Uh, Formulation. Okay. I, I won't discuss the uh, bigality in this talk, so I will stick to the case in which G mu t, the, the non dynamic method that I need to construct my theory, is non dynamic. So, what, what you do, okay, you, for instance, you, in, in the Lorentz event, okay, you, you construct a combination uh, of the, the inverse metric plus this uh, time, this, this, this non dynamic method that for simplicity that I've chosen to, to be in, in cost, and you take the traces. Uh, and you can easily see that expanding uh, this object, that, you know, for instance, trace uh, of <coughs> xn, you, you expand and you get, uh, you, you get, for instance, uh, the, uh, this master. Of course, there are many, many, many ways to get a uh, debate in level this, this step. In the, in the, in the Lorentz, in the Lorentz breaking case, when only rotation are retained, the, the, the situation is basically the same. Okay? Um, well, one way to uh, construct, uh, as I said, the, uh, the matrix is just to, uh, to use the stupid performance. So this is basically, it's just a, uh, it's just a, <coughs> you can interpret this field as, as a coordinate in a, in a, in a fictitious flat, flat space. And then uh, in, these are essentially giving you the, the embedding of this flat space in, in, in space time. They are just kind of coordinates. Okay? And so, in a sense, this, this method is not dynamic, okay? Um, and in the, if you choose a special choice of coordinates, this unit gauge, then you, you eat a new uh, is, 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 is recovered. As, as a, a, I was mentioning, also someone in the audience, this unit gauge choice, I, I mean, it's a, you have to specify physically <coughs> what kind of a frame corresponds to this unit gauge choice, right? It can be. This can be the coordinate in which, for instance, the SMB is, uh, is, uh, is uh, isotropic, or could be, I don't know, <coughs> the coordinate in which the solar system is at rest, or whatever you know. But clearly, you need uh, to specify once for all what is your, I mean, what is physically, uh, what, what corresponds to, to this frame. Okay? Once, you, once you, you, you have done that, your, your, your theory becomes predictable in a sense. So there is a preferred frame. Okay. One choice that is natural, if you have in mind cosmology, to, 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 to choose the, the configuration where the super is trivial to be, to, to be aligned with the, with the same frame. In the sense that the matter preferred frame is aligned with the, uh, let's say, modified gravity the preferred frame. Okay. And of course, I, I, I don't really want to enter into details, but the same can be done also in the Lord's making case. It's not really, really um, let me stress something that, I mean, in, again, because there is always two metrics, more or less, in this game, I mean, local Lorentz invariance is always broken. So what, when we speak about Lorentz invariance uh, theory and Lorentz breaking theory, actually we are uh, speaking about a, a symmetry in the, in the unitary gauge. When you fix your unitary gauge, you can have the mass term that are Lorentz invariant or Lorentz breaking. But it is a, a residual symmetry in the, in the, in the 
in the uh, neutral gauge. But by itself, because we have two metrics, local Lorentz invariance, that is the one that one used to, uh, to deal with, normally is always broken in these theories. Okay? So technically, I would say that the, uh, probably the strong equivalence principle is, is broken in these theories. The weak is not because, I mean, you are, if you couple the, the matter fields in the standard way, weak equivalence principle is okay. Okay, and that's exactly what I was saying. So in a sense, uh, log, uh, I mean, the, what kind of uh, residual symmetry you impose on your masters um, really uh, uh, divide the theory in Lorentz environment or Lorentz breaking whether you, uh, there is a residual symmetry that is Lorentz or rotation. Okay, okay now, uh, of course, uh, the, the modifying potential so far, it was really unspecified. Now, the, the problem is how to, uh, how to construct your potential. One, one approach is the one that was called by, by Andrew or Claudia. You just you, know, you start from, from flat space time, try to build up your, your theory going in you know, one order, order by order perturbation theory. Uh, another approach is just to use a theoretical analysis. I mean, we know that if you want to have an analysis that is non perturbative, the ground dependent, you can rely on. Uh, on the chemical analysis. Of course, uh, <coughs> chemical analysis can be sometimes not very, very uh, simple, but I think in this time, in this approach, I mean, you, you can get many, many, many information uh, about, out, out of it. Okay? So you simply um, write down the metric in your IBM form. So you, you have uh, the spatial matrix, simply the metric in the equal constant slices, then you have. Uh, the laps and the sheets. Okay? So this is the most general form you can get. And in the RDMA language, the potential that appears in the action became, becomes a function of the RDMA values. And using this, uh, this curve uh, V to indicate to also do the square root of G, just for uh, simplicity. <coughs> now, the, the result from the chemical analysis are the following. Okay. If you don't uh, impose any condition on this, so you just uh, take a random uh, potential, actually when you do the chemical analysis, you get that 60 degrees of freedom propagate. This is, in a sense, uh, it is well known, <coughs> and, uh, the old result by Bolwer et Ezer, and actually one of those uh, 60 degrees of freedom uh, around flat space is a, it's a, it's a ghost. Okay? So, in a sense, uh, we need more. We cannot simply uh, plug, plug in a random uh, potential. Okay, what the analysis, the analysis show is that if you, um, if you impose that the, uh, the, the matrix made of uh, the uh, second derivative of the potential with respect to laps and shift okay, is vanishing, so it's, this matrix is rank three, uh, you get actually uh, you get uh, a, a necessary condition to have five degrees of freedom. Okay? The requirement of having this matrix zero it uh, goes into the when well <coughs> mathematical problem is called the Mondrian pair equation. And uh, what is interesting that uh, generically this condition is not enough to have uh, five degrees of freedom uh, for uh, essentially to close the analytic analysis to impose the. Degree. This, this constraint essentially is, is consistent with time evolution. You need uh, also another, uh, another, another condition that I'm not really writing down, but was important to, uh, to stress that this condition also involves the, the spatial metric. So it's, a, it's again, it's a differential equation that involves the, 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 the metric. Okay? There are other cases that can be studied in which actually the rank of this matter is not three, but is less than three. And you get essentially two or three degrees of freedom. The one that was studied originally by uh, Kubowski and, and, uh, and Rubakov. Okay? And also, um, it's interesting that uh, it's, not, it's not really um, rare that actually uh, <coughs> at the bottom level you find two degrees of freedom. But unfortunately, when you study the problem non perturbative, actually there are, there are three. So there are a tendency of this model to be strongly cut. Okay? And also, in this case, cosmology is most of the time is not very interesting. So you have basically, uh, you get only cosmology. So for cosmology, this kind of uh, this kind of class is not very uh, probable. But probably it's not very it's not very interesting. So the fact that it is a freedom class is, is more interesting. Okay, in the um, 
actually what is interesting is that you can really solve the equation that, 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 that I showed you before plus the other one that was not shown to construct the most general potential that propagates from <coughs> the field. Of field. The only requirement is, is just rotational invariance in doing that direction. And this potential is constructed in terms of two uh, arbitrary functions. has to be, of course, uh, differentiable. So it's u and epsilon. Okay? Um, essentially, uh, you construct uh, uh, u as a function of this, of this tensor kaj. It is made of the inverse spatial matrix times this psi i psi j. This is a spatial mm -hmm. tensor. This is a kind of an considered variable. And uh, this is defined implicitly by, by the other function epsilon. Okay, let, just, let me give an example to, to be clear. In the case this function epsilon depends only on, on the spatial metric, uh, psi is simply uh, ni divided by, by, by the lapse. Okay, basically, chi ij is just a, is the inverse, uh, is, the, is, is the spatial component of the inverse uh, metric. Okay? And the potential becomes a function, a rotational invariant function of uh, gij with upper indices. Uh, then you have 1 over n plus also a, a rotational invariant function of the spatial metric. So this is, the more, this is, what is a large class of potential that propagates back in the There are more general classes, but uh, I won't really uh, discuss them. Okay. Um, it's interesting that uh, you can recover the, the, the TGR uh, potential also in this form. Right? Has to be for the words, there's something wrong. And actually, you can construct epsilon and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and u for this kind of potential. It's interesting that you get more or less what, uh, what uh, Asan and Rose and they are with the trying to, 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 to define the square root of, of, of x. Actually, the variable c here is very much uh, the change of variable from the, 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 the shift to a suitable <laughs> variable that. Is very helpful for, for, for the current analysis. Yeah, it has to be like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here you see, I mean, you don't really, you don't, you, I mean, it's not really constructed by hand, I mean, it just comes from the current analysis, and it's general. Okay, um, so let me kind of give a, a, an overview of what happens in the Lorentz Land case, okay. The fun, the fun, the the, fun, the Pauli field tuning can be extended to linear level. That's exactly the the, the, the mm -hmm. model. Uh, so in the solar system, you need some some non perturbative physics <coughs> to pass the solar system test. And then, of course, the, the PPNs are very difficult to compute, and uh, there have been attempts recently to try to uh, construct these these PPNs. Okay. Um, there is a at the cosmological level. There is no sp special effect of balls, though, as, as we've seen in the talk today, there are maybe hopes to, uh, to understand better cosmology in these theories. But so far, I mean, you can say that there is, I mean, no one was able to find no a special effect of FRW cosmology. And there is also another, another important point here the, the cutoff of, of the theory, it's, uh, it's called lambda 3, it's uh, pretty low, it's 10 to the 13 in the atom ball. So, I mean, so it's really macroscopic, the, the scale at which the theory uh, becomes not, not reliable. And this, is a, this can be a problem if you try to compute, for instance, the, the static gravitational potential uh, of two masses that are, let's say, one meter apart. So it's a macroscopic distance. This computation is not easy because potentially there are quantum correlations that can be important. And there are a you know, bunch of papers in which the result tend to, to be So I don't want to, to say much uh, uh, on what is the uh, the correct result, but still, clearly, I mean, having a, such a low cutoff, it's uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, the best thing you, you want. Okay, what happens in the Lorentz breaking case? Okay, there are again in the model I showed that there are five degrees of freedom, so as distance tests are okay. You can, uh, as, as we've seen in a moment, we can, we can construct FW uh, cosmology with some mild constraint of V. Um, uh, also, it's interesting that this time the cutoff <coughs> is the best that you can get without the Higgs method. So the cutoff is still, again, uh, I'm not really saying that this is a great result, but still it's, it's, it's much higher than before, it's lambda 2, but still it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty low. But it's, I mean, you, can, you can do something here, okay? Uh, as, as I said in, in the introduction, uh, having such a very low cutoff again calls for an X method for gravity, especially if you want to do 
cosmology, every time cosmology means you want to get the inflation scale here you don't really want to live with the second order. Um, so let me discuss cosmology. Okay? So you, um, what, what you do, you, you just uh, write down the most uh, easiest answers for cosmology. That means I'm, I'm supposed that my preference frame is aligned with the CME frame. Okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm writing down the FW4 in the unit gauge. This is, is generally not, it's not the case. <coughs> as we discussed in, in, in the, in the in the previous talks, but uh, um, for simplicity and for you know physical choice of having the same frame aligned with the, uh, with the preferred frame, that's that's my my choice. Can you check that dynamically? Could you, could you um, sorry, the stability of that? Could you read dynamically? Like yeah, yeah, I, I, will, I will show you the perturbation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is dynamic or stable. Uh, there are again there are potentially a strong capital scale because I will show you in a moment. But yeah, everything is. Is, is fine unless W is not too close to, to, to minus one. So, so I guess it's, if, if you have the two frames not aligned a little bit, would they become aligned? Um, okay, okay. I, we haven't studied uh, cosmology in which they, they, you have a stack of but they are excited. We haven't really found. Maybe yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe they, they will uh, tend to dynamically tend to go to the frame in which the, the two are aligned. I don't know. It's, 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 it's a good point. Maybe. maybe. Um, uh, okay, so the, uh, the, the the contribution of the, of, the, of the V, remember the potential, the modified gravity, simply <coughs> give you, uh, gives you a, an additional piece to the energy moment intensity. We have the energy intensity of coming from matter plus another another piece just comes from the variation with respect to you know n and, uh, and and gamma j of the metric. Okay, so the, the, the the temporal part is just u, <coughs> the number is the one of the functions, okay? And the spatial part, the pressure part, contains u and epsilon. u prime is just a derivative of u with respect to uh, the gamma ij. Okay? The bisymmetry reason must be proportional to gamma ij itself. Now, uh, generically, you need something more, because remember, at the end, this theory has a preferred frame, there is something on dynamical. So generically, uh, this new term, is not really automatically conserved. Again, this is the price you have to pay because you, uh, basically you're breaking diffeomorphisms, right? So if you have, uh, for instance, a scalar field, you compute the edge of the tensor, so you, 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 know, you put your, your scalar field on shell, clearly the edge of the tensor is conserved. But here, no. You are in the gauge, you get this, uh, this uh, edge of the tensor, there is no automatically conserved. So you need to uh, impose by consistency to be conserved. And actually, that's, that's for instance, uh, the reason, so if, if you physically it means that this affected fluid is if you look, if you call it, uh, if you may call it the dark energy, has to be has to be conserved, and uh, this imposes you uh, the following condition: either h is zero, so we don't have <coughs> cosmology, or the function epsilon must satisfy this this, this condition. Um, so generically, if you uh, if you change if you take a, an arbitrary epsilon, this is, this is not the case. And this is, for instance, the reason why in the GRT, uh, uh, the, 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 the GRT does a flat, flat space cosmology. And, I mean, if you think for a moment, it's, it's kind, of, kind of natural. You have, uh, I mean, you have two metrics, essentially. One is dynamic and the other is not. One metric is, is it's matter, dynamic matter, and the other is not. So clearly, generally, if you, if you want to construct a theory in which uh, one metric is dynamic and the other is, is not, with dynamic matter, clearly, well, most of the time, you imagine there would be an inconsistency. And this is the case. So generally, in this kind of thing, you cannot get all the background you want, okay? Unless you choose a special, uh, a special uh, potential. Exactly. This basically, this is essentially the statement, okay? I mean, you... you um, yeah. Well, I mean, if you introduce phi zero, for example, and uh, okay. if you introduce the dependence of phi zero, then yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we can get uh, free morphology. True, but then you, well, you see, um, again, then it, it, again, it, it, it means that. Um, um, Are you happy with the uh, Florence virus? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> what I'm saying yeah. that, um, what? In a sense, it depends how you, uh, you, you decide 
to break uh, time deformation. Either you introduce a non trivial Stuckerberg, so you, since you solve this equation by you know, determining your Stuckerberg, or you, you impose that uh, this is uh, uh, the potential actually automatically satisfies this. this yeah, so you have two, two options. Um, I guess the thing is, once, yes. as soon as you align yourself with the F of the frame, and F of the not only has preferred frame, but also breaks and reflection. Right? Exactly. So, in a sense, you, I mean, what, what, so in this case, you, you, your, your clock is not, well, you, your clock is not anymore any the, the, the same clock, so it's uh, right. So I'm not sure of what, I haven't really explored what kind of uh, consequences you have at the cosmological level, but essentially you, you are changing your, 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 your time, right? Um, and in a way that... But, but it does you know, solve this problem, because then, then you well, have Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <coughs> oh, but, well, it's not really a problem in a sense. I mean, just you <coughs> pick up the, the right potential, if you like. Um, it's, it's really my I mean, you, you can, you could even set epsilon equal to zero. It's a, it's a solution. <coughs> yeah, but you, you need to find some. You can find some. As I said, this theory, in a sense, needs, needs fine tuning because I mean, the second method is not the method. So generically, there is no way you can get all the background you have, you have in mind. I mean, this, this is, I would say, it's uh, some. It's unfortunate, but it's, it's, a, it's a fact. So the only way to avoid this kind of tunings, or as you said, playing the stupid is to go to by gravity. There, I mean, you have a geodynamical method so that you can solve the equation of motion in general. Yeah, but it's still the yeah. same. When you still break lots of lines and lines. True, true. No. On the, from, I mean, symmetries <coughs> are exactly the, the same. Yeah. It's just a, a dynamic statement. Here, the dynamics is very constructive because you know. It's more room to make. Exactly. But in background, you have more room to, you have other dynamic functions, you can find more solutions. But at the end, the, the, you know. But you still all, have the same uh, breaking of the strong group. Absolutely, absolutely. And also, uh, all the issues are there. The cutoff is always the same. The there, so the same. everything is the same. Yeah. Okay, just uh, so choosing the epsilon equal zero in a sense uh, uh, tells you that the, the, your theory as a as a as a as a residual gauge equation of So because when epsilon is equal zero, your, your, if you write down your, your action for the multiplication, it's still linear in that. So you have a residual gauge of Okay. Okay, let me, uh, <coughs> okay, once, it's interesting that once the uh, Bianchi identities are satisfied, in a sense, the, uh, the function x will completely disappear at the background level. Because now, uh, only, only the u enters, okay? And the equation of state for this, the, the fluid is, uh, is very simple. Essentially, is a minus one plus uh, two u prime divided by u. Remember, u prime is just the derivative of u with respect to gamma j. So again, it's easy to get a uh, dark energy. Dark energy. You have just to, to, uh, to have the u prime that is not uh, too big. Okay. Oh, let me remind that uh, the sitter space is u prime, and the Minkowski space corresponds with u equals 0 and u prime equals 0 at the ground level. Uh, OK, perturbation. <laughs> Okay. What is the perturbation level? Well, if you uh, how much time I left? Yeah. Okay. So if you um, if you study your perturbation around the FL, the FL solution that I just showed you, while you expand the, the metric, the perturbation, you know, standard notation, you have tensor, you have uh, vectors, and you have two scars. Okay. So the you, when you do your computation, the scalar part, okay, has uh, essentially one dynamical. Uh, Field that is left, the other can be integrated out. And you can see that the, uh, this is the important part the sigma is just k square times sigma one, this, this guy, and k square is just a, a spatial moment. I'm, I'm using full transform. Um, you see that the gated term of this guy is proportional to u prime. So if u prime is very, is, is, is very small, here you have a strong capital problem. 
because this guy becomes, uh, I mean, tend to get it term tend to be zero. Okay. Same story for the vectors. Again, uh, uh, so it's missing a uh, U, U prime here. Okay. Uh, so again, but um, there are no problems for in the in the in the speaking sector. So you see, when uh, U prime is 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 is, 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 is zero. Essentially, uh, there are uh, scars and vectors do not propagate. Okay? So you have a strong coupling again. So you, in order to this model to, to be viable, you, you have to uh, pretend that uh, u prime is not very close to zero. Remember that u prime equals zero corresponds exactly to, to w equal minus minus one. So here there is a relation between this is generic because. Basically, uh, it's really uh, independent of what, what kind of model you have, you have shown. That there is a relation between the strong, the strong tap scale around the FFW, and essentially the, uh, uh, the equation of state. Because now I can use my background equation to write down u primes in terms of uh, uh, of h. Okay. So, so you, you can write down the the, the the strong capping scale in terms of W effective. So if you plug in the numbers again, you see that uh, it's essentially 10 to the minus 4 millimeter inverse, and here there is a uh, basically U prime, essentially. This proportional is just W effective plus 1. So it's, it's W effective is, is equal to minus 1, essentially you have infinite strong, strong, strong capping. So in this theory, you can get dark energy, it's okay, but you cannot really get too, too close to, to minus one. And you see, this kind of bound, uh, it's, uh, it's, I would say, um, it's, uh, it's almost consistent, it's consistent, I would say, with the, uh, the local test of, of uh, the Newton's law, because the uh, Newton's law has been tested at, at the sub scale. So you would naively expect that if there is some modification and so the scale, probably when, once you, you you get there, you, you cannot really trust uh, your theory. I mean, if, if, if something is, 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 I mean, if you if you test uh, gravity at scale that are much more smaller than this scale, you don't find nothing. It's not it's not acceptable to uh, to have a top solid. Again, you cannot trust the theory where already you know that there is no problem. And again, this is really general. I, I haven't really, basically, uh, it works for a, a large class of theory with five degrees of freedom. Just rotational invariance is, 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 is required. So in a sense, uh, there is kind of, you see, once you measure very precisely, double effective, and once you measure very precisely, uh, you look for uh, any deviation of uh, the Newton's law, at, at some limited scale, I mean, this, I mean, these allowed the region shrinks because you are constraining. You know very well this one, and, and, and you know that the effective must go down as soon as you, you probe at some limited scale. Uh, so in this, again, this is uh, this is the story. So um, I mean, still okay, but clearly there, there are. I mean, as soon as W would be measured with better accuracy, clearly this kind of view would be, would be in danger. Um, OK, let me come to my conclusions. So uh, if you pick randomly uh, a modified gravity theory without derivatives, OK, you, you get six degrees of freedom. And, most of, and, and, and one of them is, is always a, a cost. Um, and there are, there is an non-perturbative construction of all modified gravity theories without derivatives in five degrees of freedom. Actually, we can do even better study of the case in which we have less than, than five degrees of freedom. And uh, I would say that phenomenologically, what really appears that uh, the Lorentz invariant breaking class of theories are, in a sense, are in better shape. You have five degrees of freedom, there is no discontinuity. The cutoff is lambda 2, is the highest possible without any mechanism. Mm -hmm. This is the, the bright side. On the not so bright side is that, unfortunately, um, when you want to do serious cosmology, you need to uh, provide initial conditions for your, for your theory. So you, you need to, for example, do the primordial spectrum. And unfortunately, if uh, the inflationary scale, where, where most of the time the, uh, 
initial condition are set by the primordial spectrum, it's, uh, well, it's not, it's not, it's, I would say, much, it's much, much higher than the, the, the lambda 2, okay? So we are very far. I mean, for instance, BBN, that more or less is, is the scale at which where you, you can really trust the cosmology, is still, is still okay. But as soon as you want to, to for instance, you want, if you want to, to compute this, the same being in this, this kind of theory, what, what do you need to do? There are, as, as I said uh, before, there are more degrees of freedom, there are vectors, there, are, there is a scalar, so you need to provide the initial condition for, for that. But you cannot do it really consistently because in order to do that, you have, you have you go in a, in a region where you cannot really trust you, you, you feel. So either you okay, so okay, pretend to, to forget, um, let's say, I'm very op op optimistic, I'm using, uh, let's say, standard boundary condition, uh, as I pick up Gaussian uh, primordial perturbation for all the field, or I simply set to, to zero the extra scalar and, and, and the vector, and then go on. But again, I mean, there is no guarantee that this is, will be the, the right thing to do, okay? Uh, so, so clearly, uh, in order to make any progress, you need to, uh, to have a, uh, an X mechanism that, of, anyway, you have to try to find a way to have a, a higher cutoff, at least to get, let's say, near to the inflationary scale, in order to make uh, serious predictions in, in cosmology. In this case. 